Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the Capitan, giving them all. Dress like a million bucks, but things in his cup. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody, you are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey, man. Got a radio show, man. Yeah, I do. Steve Harvey got a radio show because uh, I, I can't tell it to you any other way because God has been so, so very amazing to me. But the same God, and there is but one, that same God is it can and will be amazing in your life if you just allow it to happen you know uh i was somewhere you know and i was driving uh on the freeway somewhere and i saw a billboard uh and it was a guy in a field on his knees and on this billboard it said something to the effect when when you've run out of answers, try prayer. And I was I was going uh, somewhere. And I, I don't even remember. I, I go so much, man. I I, anyway, I was just going somewhere, and I saw this billboard, and 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 I thought about that. And man, I I I cannot tell you how true of a statement that is. When you've run out of answers. When you don't know what to do, when you feel weak, when you are at a low point, when things just seem to keep happening to you and you don't understand why, prayer is an amazing weapon. Prayer is available to all of us. Here's the deal. You don't have to go through the all that you're going through alone. See, I'm talking to men, women, boys, girls, students, leaders, bosses, employees. I don't care what's happening. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care if your relationship is all jacked up. I don't care if your kids and your relationship is jacked up. I don't care if your relationship at work is shot. Your coworkers seem to always make you the buddy end of the joke. You always, somebody always talking about you behind your back. You're finding it more and more necessary to try to hold your head up and walk past these people when some days you can't even get your chin up off your chest. If, 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 if you're a woman out there and you've been alone by yourself for so long and you just tired of being alone, you really want a relationship. You really want to be, have a, a mate. You want to meet your soulmate. Whatever it is, whatever it is, prayer 
is the answer. You, you are listening to a guy who is a direct recipient of prayer. I, I can't tell you anything that I've gotten out of that I didn't pray about. Oh, now, there are a lot of things. Hold on. Let me backtrack a little bit. There are a lot of things that have happened in my life that I've gotten past without praying because I think my mama was praying for me. And then there's this thing that God has called grace and mercy that he just somehow keeps us all waking up every day with our foot on some form of solid ground because he's just waiting on us to come to him. But y'all, if you can implement prayer into your day, every single day, and I'm talking about put it in there at the top of your day, put it in there in the middle of your day, Put it in there when you close your day out. When you sitting at your desk and ain't nobody bothering you, that's a good time. Now, look, you don't have to make no scene. You ain't got to let everybody know, oh, I'm spiritual. I love God. Look at me. Oh, I'm down. Oh, you ain't got to do none of that. Matter of fact, don't do it for that reason. Because if that's your reason for doing it, that's going to be your reward. If you want somebody to just say, oh, they pray every, you know, they pray at lunch and they had a Bible on their desk and they have a bunch of highlights in it. If you sitting it out there so people can see that that's what you do, then that's going to be your reward. Please know you, 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 that's, that's going to be your reward. What I want you to do is pray. Ask God for the things, the desires of your heart have a faith, believe in them, but pray earnestly, man. I mean, actually go at it with saying, Hey God, listen to me. I can't do this without you. I need your help. Listen, I, man, I know a lot of people that pray. I know a lot of it. If I told you the rich and famous that I talk to that pray constantly, it would amaze you. Go talk to God about it, man. Matter of fact, you done already got yourself into trouble. Go talk to God about it. You can't see no way out. You're in a situation, you're thinking about doing something straight crazy. Pump your brakes, partner. Slow down a little bit. My man, slow down. Don't, don't. All you're going to do is make the situation worse. Go over there today and talk to God. Talk to God for real. Just, and look, man. You know what, man? Sometimes I've gone to God and I've just said, hey, God, I don't have a clue. Matter of fact, I'm so jacked up right now, God, I only really know what to ask you for. I just need some help. I'm so deep in some mess right now. Not only can I not see the way out, I can't see my way around. There's a, there's a poem called Invictus and the opening line says, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole. I thank God for whatever be for my unconquerable soul. That it, this line is so deep. It starts off saying, I am in deep trouble. I'm in a pit. Black as a pit from pole to pole. I'm talking about, man, from over there, to over there, it's pitch black. And 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 man, there's man, you you ever been in that situation before, y'all? Because I have. I'm talking about black as a pit from pole to pole. God is there. God is available. God is always standing by. He just wants you to come to him. See, he been coming to you a whole lot of times. He's presented himself. I can't tell you how many times he's shown you how good a God he is. He's given us all grace and mercy without us asking for it. He's gotten you through some things and you looked up and boy, oh man, I don't know how the hell. Okay, that's cool. I'm cool. No, 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 no. That wasn't cool. That was God. Pray, man. When you out of answers and you don't know what to do, pray. If you see some trouble coming, pray. If you already got into it, pray. If you don't know the answers, pray. If you can't see no way out, pray. Pray, man. Talk to God. Don't make a scene. Just talk to God. All right? Very important. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another day, another opportunity, another blessing. God did it again, showed up, didn't ask us nothing, just keep doing what he do. Create new days, new opportunities, new blessings, new chances, all of it. I'm here to receive it, man. I sure hope you are, man. Today, just do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor today. Think of all the things God has done for you. Just start thinking about everything he's ever done for you. That's called gratitude. That gets your mind right, man. That stops all them bad days you having. Because boy, oh boy, oh boy, he come through over time and time again. God is good. Welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, Mississippi Monica Jr., and the legend that is nephew Tommy. Hey, Junior, what's on your mind today? <laughs> what's on my mind? What, <laughs> what's on my mind? Let me tell you what's on my mind. Uh, let me, I, I'm telling you, this has never been said before, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm convinced if you have a chronic illness, then it's imperative you get married today. Mm. Don't you wait. If you have a chronic illness, <laughs> go ahead and get what? married today. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's, I, that's interesting. And they must be healthy. That. Don't you that marry nobody sad. sicker than you? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> yeah. The only people you can turn down is people sicker than you. That's it. <laughs> if you got sickle cell, you're going to turn people down with diabetes. Don't don't sit up there and get nobody who ain't healthy. Get somebody mm. healthy. It's imperative. Quit asking, one, quit asking for quit asking for FICO scores. Ask for medical records. That's what you need to be asking for. <laughs> yeah. I need to see what happened to your ass back in 2005. What this yeah. is about you having the whooping cough. I need to know about that. <laughs> no, I need an immunization record. Yeah, I need all of this here. I don't, I don't need nobody sicker than me. I need somebody who can help me get downstairs. I need somebody to help me bring some food up to this hospital. That's what I need. I don't need nobody talking mm. about you go first. Mm. We can't go together if you sick. I don't yeah. need you having a hip replacement. Yeah. I don't need that. I need somebody who walking fine. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can't, can't have one EpiPen in the house. No, nah, nah. Both of y'all need it. Nah, uh mm -mm, nah. <laughs> I wouldn't even what ask thing? about your. Yeah. Well, you know, if y'all both have the same damn allergic reaction, you ain't got but one EpiPen. We got somebody to make, I make this decision. <laughs> yeah. Cause see, I'm gonna tell you what I'm not interested in. See, when you see, hey, I'm not interested in your long term goals. I'm not gonna ask you what you wanna do long term. <laughs> I'm going to ask your ass what you do at Thursday. That's what I'm going to ask you. Because you're going to make it to Thursday, what I need to know. I don't need nobody else going to be out of here the next week. Why do I care about 2028? We got to get to 2024. Yeah. That's Dude, what I that's need really know. good, man. That's no, I'm really telling you, good. Listen, I thought what? this up. Yeah. No, this is really this, this is good information. I love this angle. It. Yeah, I need, you need to have this. I don't need Marriage rules. Else. Don't get nobody with the same thing you got. You can't do it. All these healthy people walking around. Why would I sit up here and turn down somebody healthy? I don't know why. Quit worrying about what they look like. Just get with them. If you met them today, marry yeah. them today. Lower your standards. Lower your standards. Yeah, quit up here trying to act like you better than everybody. You need too much help. <laughs> I like you that, dude. Dude, that's a good one. Damn your credit score. Let me yeah, see yeah. your medical record. <laughs> okay. Medical What's this record. back in 2003 about you having whooping cough? What is that about? You just <laughs> you, you get scarlet fever in 2024. Where you get that at? How the hell did you miss your polio vaccination? <laughs> <laughs> you, you my age. No, not doing it. All right. Uh, thank you, I think, Junior. No, you uh, Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, we'll hear from the nephew as he runs that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Well, you know, everybody has a child that just, you know, just don't catch quite on like, like the other kids do. And, you know, it just happens from time to time. The title is, uh, your baby going back to pre-K. Your baby <laughs> going back to pre-k it's it's just it just saddens me sometimes you know oh, your baby don't quiet. color don't color like the other kids because can't stay in the lines your baby going back to pre-k you know let's go cat dog hello uh yes i'm trying to reach miss thomas please this is miss thomas who is this uh my name is mr stapleton i'm actually the principal over at uh elementary school mm -hmm. you're i'm looking at my records indicating that your son thomas is going to be starting his first grade mm -hmm. My baby's ready. Right. Listen, Miss Thomas, um, I've been going through actually all of the children's records uh, that will be starting school, and I'm looking at your son's grades mm -hmm. from his kindergarten year. Mm -hmm. And he did good. Mm -hmm. Well, no, not exactly. I mean, there's been a few uh, 
I actually spoke with the teacher and who he was under in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And it seems like he just really wasn't up to par as the rest of the children. Mm-mm. I, I now his conduct. Now he talks, but he gets his work. So what else is, is she saying on that that ain't right? Well, what it what's, what it seems to be, ma'am, is that um, his grades weren't up to par as the rest of the other children. She did tell me he was a disobedient child. No, he's disobedient and talking two different things. Come on. Okay. Well, ma'am, listen, what we've decided here is we're going to let little actually do another year of kindergarten. Oh, no, y'all ain't going to let him do another year of kindergarten. No, sir. Ma'am, that's that's the only choice I'm I have sorry. after you looking. Know, uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, we got our letter in the mail with our report card the week after school started, and it said on the back, promoted. And if I got to get up off this couch and go get it, I'm going to be f***ed off, because I'm telling you right now, we will be in the first grade. Kindergarten wasn't that hard. I'm not sure what they told you about him, but it must be the wrong well, is that ma'am, a wait, wait, wait. my understanding, he's, he doesn't color as well as the rest of the kids. He's all color. out of the, he's out of the lines when he colors. He doesn't know his numbers completely. And that's kind of what we need when you first come into, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, into the first grade. No, uh-uh. What I can show you on this paper, he did satisfactory all the way through. Now you about to me off and I'm already sick calling me with some about my son flunking kindergarten. He ain't that kind of He dumb. does you not must... color well, ma'am. Listen, he... color ain't got nothing to do with the dead girl of kindergarten. He is going to the first grade, and I'll be down there on August 24th. He, ma'am, I... I will not be able to allow you I'm to sorry. get in the school I'm on sorry. August 24th. I'm you sorry, wouldn't... mister. I'm sorry. Uh-uh. And, and let me get, let me tell you what, let me go in and get my pencil and pen, because I don't live that far from this school, and if y'all are already down there causing some conflict, I need to get up and go down there, because I'm not telling my baby when he come home today that he ain't going to the first Ma'am, grade. I, I, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to refuse education Listen, from him on I'm August sorry. the 24th. You know what? I just went back and put him in public school. I know that was a mistake in the first place. Fooling with y'all talking about some coloring. Give me your name again, sir. Stapleton, ma'am. And what's that number down there? The number here is actually area code... Uh-uh, wait a minute. Uh, I got the number. Never mind. I pulled up this report card. I got the number and your name on the back of this paper. I tell you what, August 24th, we'll be coming in there, going to school, and I might make a trip around there this evening when I come from the doctor. Ma'am, make uh, sure uh, that the you bottom line, right ma'am, is I'm not going to... I don't want to hear that calling. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. But his, you shouldn't it's, have it's, the paper. It's I'm not sorry. only coloring. His arithmetic is I'm bad. sorry. No, uh-uh. Are you working with him at home? No, Are you doing listen, anything as a parent? I'm at home every day. Hey, what you trying to say? I'm an incompetent parent? I'm just asking, as a parent, are you working with your child? Yes, I'm working with my child every day. He can read better than you, probably. No, he can't read better. I'm well, the yes, principal. he can't read better than you because obviously you read that wrong on that paper that he's supposed to be going back to kindergarten when I know the paper said from his going to the first grade. And I'm not listening to no more of this about him going backwards. Now, if you got a problem with your paperwork, maybe you need to go talk to your secretary or somebody in there that wrote my baby name down. Your name, your know know son's name, Thomas, ma'am. I know it ain't him, baby. I know it ain't him. You're not going to sit up and tell me my son is fucking kindergarten. He is not going back to that kindergarten. Don't class. bring your son down here August Listen, the 24th. Do you, you hear me? Down. I tell you what, be ready to whip me and my husband. But we will be down there August the fourth. Backpack, shoes, uniform, everything. You hear me? I will not be able to Listen, allow him an education. Are you down there right now? I will come down there right now and can, make that correction on that paper for you. Can you because bring my your, baby can, is not going back to no kindergarten for no coloring. Can you bring him down here and let him color for me no, so I can? You talking about coloring, arithmetic, and all this stuff? No, uh, uh-uh, uh, 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 uh. We will be down there August the twenty fourth. I will have this report card in my head that says you have been promoted to the first grade and he's going to have a d- smile on his face and so are you. I got one more thing I need to tell what? you. Man. Are you listening to me? I'm listening. You ain't saying nothing yet. You better say something that sounds like the first grade because I'm not playing. I would go down to this daggum administrative office and I had d- fire because my son would be in that first grade. Who are you raising 24. your voice at? Who are you raising your voice I'm at? I'm talking to you. You're talking crazy to me. I'm talking crazy to you. What? I'm a grown woman. I don't need to be explaining to you why I'm trying to defend you, my did, son. Did you graduate? Uh, honey, I am a college degree person. I have a great job. My husband and I do well for ourselves and for our children, and that's why we know. You're not even you at you're not even at work right now, man. Listen, I'm sick, fool. I told you that when you call here. Waiting on the doctor to call me now. I'm probably missing my phone call. Can you call her? Because your son can't can call. Can I call her? What kind of question is that to ask me? Can I call her? 
What are you, white or black? You asking me, how you ask me, am I colored? No, I ask you, can you color? Like, no, no, your uh-uh, son I hear can't... some racist lines in there, can you color? No, uh-uh, mm-mm. My coloring and me being colored ain't got nothing to do with none of this. Is this a race thing? No, it's you not... trying to make sure you send him back? No, I'm not trying to send him back. I want to send him back to color, to get his coloring together. I tell you what, that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. And if you are the head person down there now, you are incompetent and you are an illiterate Call me and tell me that my son has to go back to the first grade. I got one more thing. You know what? Mixed up. I tell you what, I'm through with this conversation. I'm through with this. Co- I'm going to say one more thing, and I'm going to be out here. Are you listening? I'm listening. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your girlfriend Felicia. I'm gonna be Felicia's. <laughs> I am gonna beat her. <laughs> mother. <laughs> you about to get towed out the frame? <laughs> I mean, I'm writing numbers and everything. And I'm recording everything. I'm going to beat her. Because she know I don't play when it comes to my kids. Okay, that's all right. All right, babe. One more question now. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, more trending highlights from the Oscars. Carla has good news about the new addition, Las Vegas residency. Plus, 39-year-old former basketball wives reality star, Drea Michelle, gets a lot of backlash from her pregnancy announcement. Uh, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO. This is from JoJo in Lakeland. JoJo writes, I'm a 37-year-old female and my mother lives with me. I was out of town and a married man was at my house to see her. She denied it, but I saw it on camera. She's acting out of character and being a homewrecker. What can I do about this? Nothing. Nothing. Your mama grown. Right, your mama good and grown. Yeah, your mama had you. Yeah, she good yeah. and grown. She denied it, so now that I mean she lied. Okay. And a married man been in your house. Yeah, your mama. That's yeah. your mama now. So there's nothing Damn. she can do? Well, you can put your mama out. Yeah, that's right. You want, you want to try oh, that? they do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. but I'm that's just trying to figure out where like we're at now. I mean, to, all yeah. you could do is say, Mama, I got rules in my house, but then your mama going to remind you of the rules she had in her house that you mm-hmm. broke. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Mama yeah. doing the most. Your mama? <laughs> your mama, dog. <laughs> your mama, dog. All right. Uh, Moving on to Danielle in San Diego. Danielle says, I met a woman that has five children, and she just got divorced. I can see myself falling for her, but my friends keep telling me that she... Whoa, 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 Shirley, start over. I missed a piece of... Daniel in San Diego. Daniel, not Danielle, okay. Daniel, Uh uh-huh, Daniel. Uh huh. In San Diego says, I met a woman that has five children and she just got divorced. I could see myself falling for her, but my friends keep telling me that she can't be my soulmate with five kids. Should I pursue her or and see where it goes or put her in the friend zone? Well, first of all, your friends are speaking from their experience and their scope of things. Now, if you're going to let your friends run your life, you're going to end up just like your friends. Now, just take a close look at them, see where they are, and see how you really feel. If you feel for this woman, if it's put on your heart to pursue this woman, then pursue the woman. You may be just the thing them kids need. You may be. Mm. You may be just what they need. People get different callings put on their life, man. Quit listening to your damn friends. <laughs> you know? There's five yeah, of them now. Uh, you know, they reacting know like Kevin Hart. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Kevin Hart? <laughs> it's a lot. I know five. this now. Five is a lot. <laughs> five. You got to be ready now. Yeah. Hey, you got to be I ready. don't know their ages and Financial. all this here. Ooh, so I don't know good. how old you are now. But now listen. He Daniel. old now. He yeah, old. Daniel. He old. Uh-huh. Who, Daniel? Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't by name that baby Daniel. Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> Last we heard of Daniel was in the Bible. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, that's he older. Uh-huh. So handle your business, man. Go on and see what she about. Thank you. All right. Hmm. Moving on to Margaret in Maryville. Margaret she says, I'm, <laughs> I'm Margaret. a man. <laughs> 
I met a man that has it going on in every way, except when it comes to the appetizer. He likes to jump right into the entree. I enjoy appetizers, but I'm not doing it if he's not. Is it normal for a man to only want the entree? Is that weird or what? Hell no. What the hell do you mean? Is it weird? Who, who you been with? Hell yeah, they want... This. Now, what you got to do is, let me, you got to quit calling it appetizer. And so I got to you gotta understand how food. men work. What you got to do is you got to come up with some snacks. <laughs> you know, you just got to have some little snacks along the way. You need snacks. Uh -huh. Most men like snacks. And that's what you got to call them. You saw this appetizer. <laughs> Makes us think don't, of don't worry dinner. about that. Just <laughs> snacks. You want a snack, baby? We're going to have a couple snacks. Then we're going to eat. Yeah, hey, see, we go along with that. So, and no, it's not weird to want to jump right into the dinner. That ain't, that ain't weird at all. Hell. Okay. <laughs> all right. Last one. Last one. This is from Allison in Addison. Allison writes, my husband wants to be a vegan and I don't. I enjoy a good steak at least once a month. I'm trying to get him to compromise. Is it possible to live with a vegan and not be one? Hell yeah, you can do that. Yeah. But listen to me, this ain't gonna last. Just go ahead, keep keep grilling that steak once a month. Yeah. 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 That ain't gonna last. Don't even worry about that. Just go. On. You know, yeah, you ain't finna be no vegan. So that's it. You know, I got family. I got families full of vegans. Uh -huh. I got vegan grandchildren, vegan kids. I got all that. And, all and they want that. you to be vegan. Do they want you to? Well, they want me to, when the grandkids is with me and Marjorie, we have to treat them as vegans, and Marjorie does a good job of that. But and, what about and, Papa? And Papa the grandfather? Uh, what do you do? I think, I think you ought to try a couple things. <laughs> Experience you life. What are you giving them? <laughs> like, what do you feed your grand, your well, vegan Well, BJ was a vegan one time, and then uh, I was out there barbecuing, and he was standing over there looking at us, so I figured he was curious, so I let him uh. have one. <laughs> Carly was so damn mad. <laughs> what did you say, Dad? <laughs> Daddy, what are you doing? He don't eat meat. I said, yeah, he do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he eat meat. He eat that boy. Once you get a taste of it. <laughs> yeah, that boy, he barbecue. He going to be sick, man. I bet they ain't going to bet that won't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> then my grandson, Ezra, he a vegan, but, you know, he don't really care. And uh -huh. Ezra know he's supposed to ask, is this vegan? Because uh -huh. Rose asked before she put it, is this vegan? Uh -huh. mm. But Ezra, he don't ask. Once he see it and he want it, he lock in. And if you hand it to him, he eating it. He don't give a damn. <laughs> That's my dude right there. And it That's brings you great man. joy to oh, mess up man. their diets. Because, you know, we all go to dinner together and everything, and he uh -huh. be sitting there. You know, if he's sitting next to me, so Jason will start moving him down. Ezra want to sit next to me. He don't want him sitting next to me. <laughs> Move down here by your daddy. Hey, your papa. Ezra, don't sit up there next to Papa. Oh, you punk ass up. <laughs> Have they ever asked? Has Rose ever asked? Is this vegan? And you told, and it, and it wasn't. And you told her it was. Has that yeah, ever happened? You lied to your grandchildren. Yeah, because yeah, vegan is too, too vegan. You can't have no dairy, right? You know. No animal products whatsoever. Uh -huh. I don't know what. I don't. Why y'all at dinner with me? Because <laughs> my order, I start with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, what they tell me all the time. Papa, that's not vegan. Shut your ass up. <laughs> what? <laughs> I got now, news have, for you. Have you ever Your tried daddy. being a vegan? Have you tried it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried that. I tried that. I did for it. how long? Oh, probably about six months. Seven, oh, that's longer months. months. Oh, that's no, pretty no, impressive. No, this, no, yeah. No, about six. And it ended up about, about four, two days. Wait, you went for months? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was started when months. I started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you fake vegan. All right, yes. coming up at the top of the hour. Thank you, CLO. We'll have some entertainment news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Trending Oscar news. We have to say congratulations to Jimmy Kimmel for doing such a great job hosting the 96th yes. Academy Awards. He did do a great job. He, he was, was outstanding. Everything. We especially loved when uh, he called out Trump for basically saying that Jimmy Kimmel was the, bo- the worst host ever. Kimmel replied, uh, isn't it past your jail time? <laughs> <laughs> Why you up here worried about what I'm doing? Right. <laughs> Everybody in the audience cried. That was really funny. Uh, other Oscar news. The movie Oppenheimer won big Best Supporting act- Actress, uh, Divine Joy Randolph, for her role in the movie The Holdovers. Another crazy moment was when John Cena presented the Best Costume Award. John Cena came out on stage naked, uh, wearing Tommy. nothing but an oversized Oscar envelope. <laughs> He's cut, though. You got to give him that. Are you he real? Is, no. Yes. Uh, he is. He is. Um, anyway, uh, he wanted to showcase the importance of costumes. All right. So he did that. But it was very, it was a funny moment. It was. Um, so, and congratulations to all the winners. In other entertainment news, according to Page Six, former Basketball Wives reality star, 39 year old Drea Michelle, uh, announced her pregnancy with Houston Rockets star Jalen Green on Friday. And she posted a quote about being misunderstood after facing backlash because she and Jalen are 17 years apart. She's 17 years older than that he is. That little boy got a baby already. Yeah. <laughs> she posted on her IG story, uh, quote, get comfortable with being misunderstood. Only a fraction of people will be able to truly grasp your essence. Uh, you are not an... Uh, you're, you are not on anyone else's timeline or comprehension, timeline of comprehension. Also, it's none of your business how others choose to perceive you. Most High sees you clearly. Let that be enough. Drea's pregnancy announcement sparked backlash in social media with several users uh, labeling, labeling her a, quote, predator for having a baby with a much younger man. Like I said, she's 17 years older than he is. Well, how old is he? Well, 30, he 22. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's yes. grown man, you know. Yeah. 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 So here's a question, guys. Is it a double standard when men date women much younger and have children than if a woman does it? Yeah, look at Al Pacino and yeah. Robin De Niro yeah. and all them. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, double standards. Yeah, yeah, y'all know it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it is. Yeah. They dragging uh, Drea, though. Yeah. She has well, see, son. y'all ain't putting y'all self in this young boy position, though. You know? <laughs> well, y'all got to put she... yourself in his position. Okay. All right. So explain <laughs> that, Steve. Because, teacher, <laughs> there are things <laughs> that I still have to learn. <laughs> see, that's y'all don't understand what had happened to this boy. Okay. Uh-huh. He got bit. Uh, she's 39. You know, uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know somebody got to be in love with somebody. You know, it happens all uh-huh. the time. You know, it's just when it's when it's the older woman that's a cougar. When it's right, a younger man, man what when it's an older man, what they call older men today, young one? Fools. Older men. See, that's it. They just she call them fools. men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. Have you guys you ever know. dated younger women? I mean, older women no. actually. Older. Oh, yeah. That's what I meant older. I meant older. Damn, now everybody would be younger yeah. than me. So <laughs> <laughs> I tried to correct myself. <laughs> How the hell are you older than me? That's what I mean. When you guys were younger, did you all date? When I was young, women? I had an older chick. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, was and the age different? Were you were you sprung? Hell yeah. Who? <laughs> I was up in there learning. I was like, teach me, teach me. I was going in with notebooks and everything. <laughs> learning. I was coming in, I was bringing an apple and everything. Hey, teach us that. I was up in there. Woo! <laughs> what about you, Junior? I was 22. She's 37. Yeah. Oh, same sister. Oh, okay. yeah. Situation almost. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Hey. How'd that go? When she when she said she can't do this no more, I know I started crying. I know. That. Oh, I, I, I said, is anyway we can work through this? Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, she got back with her husband, uh, you know. So yeah. Was, oh, so, she got back with her husband. Uh, yeah, oh, they were separated. You, you, oh, you was real. There's sweet. that. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah. I was 21. She was 42. Whoa. Okay. 42. <laughs> you went all the way over there. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Why'd y'all break up, Steve? 
<laughs> I couldn't handle it no more. <laughs> you broke it off. I just said, I, I, when I, I said, I can't do this no more. <laughs> I got to go to work. I got to call it in, all this stuff. I got to. <laughs> Calling in. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I can't do this no more. Oh, I, ain't, I ain't got the gas money for this here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had a whole you. lot of little reasons that, that would help me. I ain't had a gas money. I couldn't afford. I can't take it nowhere. Uh-huh. Oh, I went yeah. to a restaurant one time, and she ordered something. I went, what is that? <laughs> it was dessert. I'm sitting there going, what is that? Let me see. I'm working out forward. This ain't working out. Uh, then next thing I know, they came and they set the dessert on fire next to the table. Oh, I said, she too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what something. was that? Cherries yeah. Jubilee or something? Oh, bananas Foster. Oh, okay. uh-huh. something. They yeah. set that fire next to the table. I said, I right. Got to break up with this hill boy. <laughs> <laughs> it went well. I keep taking you too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Nephew, where we go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if I can talk about it, but Sister what? Carolyn. Well, Sister Carolyn ain't around no more. Sister Carolyn. Sister Carolyn? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to say Sister Carolyn. All right. Is you better in church? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, Biden's State of the Union tr- address is still trending as voters go to the polls in Georgia and Mississippi today. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending political news, we all saw when President Biden delivered his fourth State of the Union address last week. In it, he attempted to pitch himself as the most viable candidate for a second term. He addressed housing and college costs, IVF and Roe v. Wade, sending aid to Ukraine and more. Among other policies, Biden spoke at length about crime. He said that he is demanding a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, and he is urging lawmakers to pass universal background checks. He followed that up by comparing himself to Donald Trump. He said, quote, meanwhile, my predecessor told the NRA he's proud he did nothing on guns while he was president. But see, but that keeps his money coming from the NRA. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all yeah. it is. It's about the money, man. It ain't about safety, saving lives. It ain't about gun control. It ain't about stopping mass murders. They don't care. They don't care as long as they making a profit. <laughs> and they got a party to attach sad that to. Sad it's called true. the Second Amendment. Mm. That's so sad. Yeah, that's it's so it's ridiculous, man. Yeah. It is ridiculous what's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guy, you know, he was at he was at the UFC fight this weekend, Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And every time the camera went there, crazy applause, crazy <laughs> applause. Yeah, it's really, it's really he's beloved. <laughs> it's it's really a, it's a sad statement for mm-hmm. this country. It really is when that's your candidate of choice. Yeah. That you put as your representative. I'm okay with Republicans. I'm okay with conservative yeah, viewpoints on some things. Republican. I don't like the far right, but I don't like the far left either. I'm okay with you being Republican, but can you not put forth a better candidate? Right. 91 indictments. One, 91 indictments. A sexual conviction. Paying off hookers. I mean, what the world? You he tried to fix the election. Yeah, he tried to. Yeah. The result. You did is yeah. it incited a daytime riot. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, you right. know, right. Right. overthrow yeah. the government. All of yeah. these things. Ugh, I make mean, me sick. Down there <laughs> rioting in the daytime. Have we not taught y'all nothing? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. What is you down there I mean, in the daytime for? We Everything. see you. Yeah. People lost their lives and all of that. It's and it's dangerous. crazy, it's man. Horrific. The policemen lost their lives and stuff like that. There, there's convictions. People have gone to prison yeah. for this riot that this man clearly said, let's go down there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll go we down there with him. you. He said that. We heard How y'all him, think so. it wasn't him? Yeah. All them people went down there. And, and the president made reference to that too in his speech. He said, "You can't, <clears throat> you can't be mad at the country. You can't be mad at the country just when you lose, or you can't, you know, love the country just when you win. What yeah. is that? Yeah. Then when you're when you're mad and you lose, then you you want to incite but a McConnell, riot. Come on. 
McConnell, yes, and Mitch and McConnell. and all of them boys knew on God. that day it was wrong, and they said yeah. they can no longer support this. All right, coming up at thirty four minutes after the hour, famous YouTuber Jake Paul will box Mike Tyson. What? Who you got? We'll talk about it. Who right you after think this. we got? You know who we got? <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, YouTuber Jake Paul scheduled his next boxing match against former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson. Iron Mike will be 58 years old when he climbs into the ring this summer. Las Vegas odds makers set Jake Paul as the easy favorite. All right. Easy. That's who they have. Uh, what? He pr- yeah, they do. Easy favorite. He promoted this history-making match on Instagram. Uh, he says the biggest fight of the 21st century in the biggest NFL stadium in the U.S., broadcast live on the biggest streaming platform in the world. Two years ago, Mike Tyson needed a cane to walk. He simply stated yesterday, quote, we signed the contract. Netflix secured the exclusive rights to the fight that will be staged on Saturday, July 20th inside the Dallas Cowboys AT&T Stadium. Jake Paul's professional boxing record includes six knockouts. Mike Tyson has not seriously fought in two decades. In his heyday, of course, we know that Iron Mike rarely needed more than one round to knock out his opponent. Uh, (laughs) Sometimes it was 30 seconds. After one round, it was over. (laughs) You paid all that money to go to the fight. (laughs) To see Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm going to this fight. Let's go to this fight, huh? No. Something to get. No, it was in Vegas. No, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't nothing to do. It's Dallas. Come on. It's a Dallas. Yeah. I can't go nowhere in Dallas, dog. <laughs> Why? We Why can you go to famous? fight. We can go eat and take it on in. That's enough. Go eat. Are you famous? No, nah, man. I'll go to fights in Vegas, man, because I got to go out there. I got to get something. Because after this raggedy ass fight, I got to be at least going to try to shake them loose. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Vegas odd, odds makers have Jake Paul. Who do you guys have? Well, here's a problem. Here's first of all, Mike. the feints, the feints that Mike Tyson is still capable of doing. Jake Paul has never seen. Okay. He's never seen that in a real ring. <laughs> What's that? If the the feints, you know, the head the head uh-huh. movement, uh-huh. the uh-huh. blowing, okay. the shifting. But he's 58, uh, Paul, Steve. Is he still fast? Uh, all you got to do is look at the tapes. He still can faint. Jake Paul has never seen those fight, those okay. faints. He's been fighting MMA people and 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 yeah. the NBA players. No, no. <laughs> yeah. You finna get up in there with a dude that really did this. Now, he's faster than Mike, and he's got more endurance than Mike. Uh-huh. In the first two rounds, if Mike get inside close and Jake Paul does not have the awareness of getting the wall off them ropes, he going to eat him. He going to eat him. Because he going to hit him in the body like he ain't never been, been hit before. Now, if Tyson gets in there horribly out of shape, then we're going to see some dry mess. So are you speaking as a former boxer, Steve? Yeah. I'm just speaking as a, uh, I don't want to uh-huh. say something. No, I've never been at that level. So, no. uh, let's start with the end. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Let's start with the end. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Claire. Yeah. 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 I almost said that, but I, I that's all it is. I know you did. I'm just sitting up here going, uh uh-uh. Because uh, you used to fight back in the day, too. Uh, but but I'm body. sick of this. Welterweight. This, this, uh, Jake Paul is brilliant. In that he handpicks these people. Uh-huh. All of it's his idea. Okay. And he knows what to do. He's gotten better and better and better. He's become oh, no. but if but and he could never make this money as a professional fighter. Well, I was about to say uh, oh, because okay. he'd have to do no, he yeah. can't do that. He's gotta do these gimmicks and he's a yeah. brilliant market man. I mean, Tyson going to get 50 million for this. I don't know what Jake Paul That's what I was going to about the purse. Yeah. 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 Tyson is getting 50 million. I don't know what Jake Paul getting. He's 27. Jake Paul is 27. Yeah. Will he be getting more than Mike? Oh, no. I'll put my money on Mike, though. Yeah. I'll put my money on Mike. Mike was knocking people out when you was in Pampas. (laughs) But does he still have it? That's the thing today. I seen him now. With if he hit you, in. if he hit you, you go into bed. I know Lights out. his hands are lethal. I know that, but lights yeah. out. But you, yeah. he gonna hit you so hard, you had time to wash your face and everything. <laughs>
<laughs> gather, gather yourself. <laughs> Wash your face. Take, right, take your makeup off. Put a hat net on. Go and lay your ass down. <laughs> we'll see Saturday, July 20th in Dallas. All right. Coming up next, it is the nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, he overthinks everything. Uh, we'll get into that, find out what that's all about in just a few, because right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, now? Well, you know, a lot of people give up things for Lent. So I'm going to give up something for Lent, and I'm going to call this guy and let him know that I'm giving up his wife for Lent. You know, I'm just, Oh, my goodness. Hey, 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 I'm taking a break, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got to give up something. You know what I mean? I might as well let him know. Yeah, I'm giving up your wife for Lent. So. For 40 days. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Now, now I'm 41 now. Hey, uh-huh. all right. We got to get back we to back. normal around here. Uh-huh. We got to get back to normal. Cat dog, let's go. Lent. Hello? Hey, I'm trying to reach Dorsey. Yeah, this is he. Who is this? This is Cliff, man. I work at the post office with your wife. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right. Everything cool? Yeah, everything good, man. Everything good. Um, like I say, uh, my name is Cliff, man. I wanted to reach out and holler at you about a couple of things if you if you got a minute. You got a minute? Yeah, is everything all right with my wife? Is something wrong or something? No, 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 no. Your wife good, man. Your wife good. I wanted to hit you up, man. We've been working at the post office quite a while. We've probably been in the same room a few times, man. I don't know if you, you remember meeting me or not, but... Uh, oh, okay, okay. But what I wanted to say, man, is... is uh, Trying to do better with my life, dog, and you know, just just trying to do better. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for okay. for Lent, man, I I gave up a few things. You know what I'm saying? I I just thought that would be a, a, a good thing, man, to try to the, the things that matter the most or uh, that you're addicted to. You know, you want to get rid of. You know what I'm saying? At least for Lent is what I'm trying to do. You feel me? Okay, I'm kind of confused, but what that what they got to do with me? Well, basically, man. I'm 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 giving up for Lent, you know. I decided to give up uh, messing around with your wife, you know, because because. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, man. Hold on, man. I'm at work. I don't know what you' talking about, but back up and rephrase everything you just said. Well, like I say, man, for Lent, I'm trying to I'm trying to give up stuff that I'm that I'm addicted to, you know. And I decided. Okay, but what's that got to do with me and my wife, though, and you? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you, man. I'm trying to give up messing around with your wife for Lent. I mean, that's what I have given up. I've given up messing around with your wife for Lent. Man, what the f- talking about, man? Messing around with my wife, man. I ain't got no time for no games right now. Who the f- is this, man? Like I what's say, your, what's, your, what's your name again? This is Cliff, man. I, I actually work with her for the last 10, 12 years. But but what I wanted to really let you know is, you know, her schedule probably going to change because what we used to be doing, we ain't doing, so she's probably going to be coming home a little bit earlier or things like that. But I, I don't want you getting addicted to it because, you know, after Lynn is over, then, you know, we'll be back what we used to do. Man, what the is you talking about, man? Hold on, my, my wife's going to be home in a minute. We're going to talk about all this shit with me, man. I'm about to get Hold on, what, 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 are you are you in the city right now? Can I can I meet with you right now, Cliff? Right? Okay, okay, but what I'm what I'm trying to say, well, like you know, I'm saying, I'm trying to do better. You know, I'm, I gave up. You trying to do better? That sound like a bunch of <laughs> to me. I got something for you and my wife. This <laughs> is true. Okay, 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 man. I mean, ain't you feeling me though? I'm trying to do better though. I ain't feeling the thing. You calling me, telling me my wife. I think we need to meet up and talk about this face to face, Cliff. Uh, what you think? I mean, we we can talk right now if you want to have a conversation. Nah, nah, nah. You just uh, tell me your address, and uh, me and my wife finna just come on over there. How about that? And we we all sit down and have a little powwow. I don't know who the think you is, man, but me and my wife been together over 15 years, and we ain't never had no problems with no like this. Like the you telling me on this phone, it sound like a bunch of crazy. To me, but somebody net gonna today if this is true. So what you need to do, you need to tell me your name, your number, and I don't know why you call from this block phone number. You hear me? Hey man, I'm hearing you, man. I, what I'm saying, the reason for the call was to let you know, you know, don't get used to her schedule because after Lent, it's gonna be back to the way it used to be. That's all the phone call. Man, what the f- is you talking about? What get no, nah, no, nah, what's your what's your what's your what's your last name, Cliff? I'm finna come find you. 
I'm finna come see you now, Jack. My name is Cliff. Like I say, I work at the Cliff. And I work at the post office with. So okay, well how come you call from a block number, Cliff? What's your phone number, man? Hey, 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 man, listen. I'm not trying to have no confrontation with you, man. It's already a confrontation. You can call my phone from a block number. I don't know you. You don't know me. And you telling me you've been my wife. Are you serious? Did you know she was married? Well, I mean, what you mean? Did you know she was married? Yes or no? I mean, yeah. I, knew, I mean, yeah, I knew she was married. Okay, well, there it is. You knew that from the jump. So that means you've been disrespecting me from the jump. So now I got to get in your mind. You just been told off on yourself. So irregardless, I'm coming to see you today, Jack. Hey, and, and my name ain't Jack, man. My name Cliff. But you're not. Hey, I'm not. Okay, finna well, look here, like I, said, I don't have no. Huh? I'm not trying to have no confrontation. I just wanted you to be aware of the schedule. Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely aware <laughs> now, Cliff. Who the hell is you, hey, man? Hey, man. Another thing, man. Is I want to say this here. Like I, I know, I know your tattoo on uh, your name on her lower back. I seen that. Uh, it say Dorsey what? right there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, man. You telling me you didn't seen the tattoo on her back? Is that what you tell oh, me? On her lower back, man, right, 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 right on above her tailbone. Yeah, I seen it. Dorsey, your name Dorsey, right? Man, who the f is this, man? What's your real name? Hey, man, hey, dog, calm down, man. Are you are you cool with the now, schedule change? Calm down. You call my phone. Are you cool with the schedule changing? Is what I'm asking. What? Are you cool with her schedule changing? You see what I'm saying? Her schedule gonna come back to normal. Once Lent is over with, I gave up messing around with her for Lent, man, but not for him. I'm not cool with a thing. I'm about to be cool in your face in a minute. Now tell me your name, tell me your number, and your real address, and we are gonna talk about our list in person. Okay. All uh, right. What? What? My name. What's my, your name? My uh, I'm a, my name Tommy, man. Okay. Now we getting somewhere. Tell me what. I mean. I mean. Why you need my last name? Because I'm finna come see you. What you mean, why I need your last name? Hold on, hold on. Somebody get Angie on the phone. Hey, hold on, don't go nowhere. We finna get Angie on the phone right now, and we gonna settle this right now. Hold on. Get on the phone. Call her. Call her. For real. Yeah. Tommy, who? What you scared of? Okay, man. They call me Nephew Tommy. Oh, who? My name Nephew Tommy. <laughs> From Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> What? Oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> she done set me up, man. Man, your wife got me to prank call you, man. She texted you, said, I, left, I just left the house. Call him now. Uh, uh, that's why I <laughs> ain't answering the phone. <laughs> it was over for you, man. Y'all, come on, man. Y'all wrong for this, man. This need to be against the law, man. Hey, man, I got to ask you, baby, what's the baddest radio show in the land, man? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, <laughs> I guess. And there you have it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ignorant, ignorant, <laughs> ignorant. What? What, 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 what? No. Late too giving much. Up your, I'm giving your wife up for Lent, okay? There you have it, young man. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. This week is going down. <laughs> Richmond, Virginia, baby. The nephew is coming to the Funny Bone. I told you I added a show on Thursday. That means Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And guess what? You already know. Sold out. So we added another one. This is the last one. It will be a 3 o'clock show on Sunday. 3 o'clock on Sunday. So as soon as y'all get out of church, get you something to eat, come on in, get your laugh on at the Funny Bone. Nephew Tommy will be in the building. All right. Last show is up for sale. That is Sunday at three o'clock in Richmond, Virginia at the Funny Bone. Yay, yay. Laying in the cut. It is Montgomery, Alabama. That's right. March 30th, Saturday night at the Montgomery Performing Arts Center. That is me. That is J.J. Williamson, celebrity, the comedian, and the one and only Earthquake, baby. We rocking it. We rocking it. Montgomery. Get your black hats ready. We're going to throw them all up in there. Steamboat coming in. <laughs> telling jokes at the same time. All right. The Put your black hat on. It's going down. So tickets are on sale right now. Montgomery Performing Arts Center, Montgomery, Alabama. We marching on comedy, baby. All right, nephew. Thank you. Coming up, it is a strawberry letter. The subject is he overthinks everything. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationship, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now, and you never know, it could be yours. It could be yours. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, he overthinks everything. Dear Stephen Shirley, I love my husband with all of my heart, but I do not like him and I don't like being around him. I cannot have a conversation without him weighing the pros and cons of what I'm telling him. For example, prom season is coming and our son has a date, but our daughter chose to go to the prom with a group of girls. He tried to get my daughter to ride to the prom with our son and I had to shut that down. He thought of every reason in the world to keep my daughter from doing her junior prom her way. When we are out with friends, he can't decide which credit card he is going to use because one card gives him perks and the other one has a better interest rate. With groceries, he overthinks buying produce and he's talked to the manager at Kroger a few times to ask what state certain vegetables were grown in. When I come in from work and kiss him on the cheek, he'll ask why I didn't kiss him on the lips and assume I had garlic or fish for lunch and my breath is not fresh. It's nonstop with this man in the bedroom. If I don't let him know he's doing a good job the entire time, he will apologize and ask me what he can do to improve. We've been married 18 years, so whatever he's doing in the bedroom is just fine with me. I'm tired of explaining why I do things and then listen to him telling me how I can could have done it. Uh, <laughs> I think that medical marijuana might help him relax. How do I get him to stop overthinking everything? Well, I don't really think, you know, you can stop getting him, uh, you can stop him from overthinking everything. That's just who he is now. I mean, it seems like he's been that way throughout your, your marriage. You're, you're just noticing it now. Uh, and when I look at this letter, you don't really have any major, major problems like other people. I mean, you're just mad because your husband uh, overthinks things and he, he doesn't do things on your timeline. Basically, uh, he sounds like a good guy. You say you love him in the bedroom. You love him with all your heart and all of that. Uh, I mean, and men do that a lot. They try to figure things out. You know, they try to come up with solutions and all of that. So I, I think you're just kind of tired of hearing his voice. You say you don't like him and you don't want to be around him. I think, you know, that's more of uh, of what you're talking about. I mean, these hap- things happen in marriage all the time. It sounds like you've grown apart a little bit. Uh, but you got to you got to figure out a way to fix this because you don't want to break over this break up over this little bitty thing. Uh, the love is still there, thank God. So you you got to try to fix it. You and your husband need to do something uh, to save this situation before it's too late because I think now if you do continue like this, it could grow into something on your part, resentment, hate, whatever. I don't want to see you guys break, over, break up over this. You guys got to talk and sit down and try to work this out. Steve? This couple right here, first of all, I don't like the letter. Yeah, I didn't like it in on. the first damn line. <laughs> first of all, subject, he overthinks everything. Here's a line I didn't like. Stephen Shirley, I love my husband with all my heart, mm-hmm. but I do not <laughs> like him and I don't like being around him. Hell, it's over. Yeah, she don't like the, the What is a marriage if you don't want to be around him, like him, talk to him, and nothing like this? This is, I don't care how much you love a person. Whoa! What's love got to do, got to do with it? What does it have to do with it if you don't like him or like being around him? Your husband is just, he he all wrong on so many levels. I'm not really sure. I think this is a person, this is a control freak. I think he has control issues. We had a person that worked here at the station like that. It's people like that who just want credit and control. I've worked around people like this before. Got to get control for everything. Need credit for everything. Damn, what about profit? What about results? Why are you so busy trying to get credit and control? I can't have a conversation without him weighing the pros and cons of what I'm telling him. Prom season coming up. Son got a date, but our daughter chose to go to the prom with a group of girls. 
He tried to get my daughter to ride to the prom with our son. I had to shut that down. Hell yeah. She in the car blocking. Just messing the whole date up. Don't nobody want to go on no damn date with their sister. <laughs> what young dude want to go on a date with his damn sister sitting up in the car? I don't care how she dressed. She's still my sister. You should have heard what he said to her. This ain't your business. But your, your husband trying to save money and control the situation. Then he want to try to protect his daughter. He don't really want her to go in with them group of girls, want her brother in the car. All well, that ain't finna work out. Anyway, he can't decide which credit card he going to use. When we go out with friends, he can't decide which credit card he going to use because one card give him perks and the other one has a better interest rate. So use the one with the better interest rates. You don't get no perks. Use the one with the perks. They're going to charge you for them perks so you don't get a higher interest rate. Well, what you want me to tell you? <laughs> Y'all need a new damn credit card. Y'all need a credit card with <laughs> perks and low interest rates. That's all I can tell you. I'm not finna sit up here and try and figure this out right here. But if you playing, if, but I'm telling you right here, if you're not paying off them credit cards every month like it's an American Express, you're going to get ate up with interest rates anyway. Mm. I don't know what to tell you. With grocery, he overthink buying produce, and he's talked to the manager at Kroger a few times to ask what state certain vegetables come from. Who do that? <laughs> Her Who husband. do that? All right, listen, hang on. No Steve, damn okay? body. <laughs> we'll have part two of your response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Today's Strawberry Letter subject, he overthinks everything. <laughs> we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject is, he overthinks everything. We're reading a letter from a marriage that's doomed. <laughs> the woman that in the opening letter says, I love my husband with all my heart, but I don't like him and I don't like being around him. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Ain't we talking about how you stay married? You might love him, but don't sound like you in love with him. So we in trouble. You can't have a conversation with him without him weighing the pros and cons about it. Y'all argue about everything. His son, your son and your daughter going to the prom. Your son got a date. Your daughter decides she going with a group of girls. Your husband want her to ride with your brother. Sitting up in the car messing it up. Don't no dude want to go on no damn date with his sister. You can't talk freely. The other girl sitting in the car, damn, why your sister here? Just horrible. Now you're down at the grocery store. He can't make a decision about nothing. And he's trying to figure out which credit card to use because one got perks and the other one got better interest rates. Well, you need a new credit card. Damn it, you need a card with perks and low interest rates. <laughs> you need a capital card. You seen the commercial? <laughs> What's in your wallet? <laughs> yeah, what's in your wallet? Obviously, it ain't a capital card. You need a damn capital card. Uh, Kevin on that commercial, Samuel L. on that commercial. You need a new credit card. Now, he overthinks buying produce. He's even talked to the manager at Crow, Kroger a few times to ask him which state certain vegetables are grown in. I wish he'd asked me. You don't work at Kroger. <laughs> yeah, but just for stupid questions like this. Ooh, I say, oh, in. sir, yeah, we grow all our vegetables ourselves. Well, what state you growing them in? They out back. <laughs> Behind I the have him driving stuff. around looking for that damn garden. <laughs> When I come in from work and I kiss him on the cheek, he always asks why I ain't kiss him on the lips and assume I had garlic or fish for lunch uh, and my breath is not fresh. It's nonstop with this man. In the bedroom, if I don't let him know he's doing a good job the entire time, he will apologize and ask me what he can do to improve. What? Anyway, we've been married 18 years, so what? Ever he's doing in the bedroom is just fine with me. I'm tired of explaining why I do things and then listen to him telling me I, how I could have done it. I think that medical marijuana might help him relax. He don't need no damn medical marijuana. He needs some weed from off the street. He this is weed. You need a plug. You need someone. You need to go somebody's what? house. Yeah, you don't need no damn medical marijuana. You need some weed off the street. <laughs> You need to ask around who got the good stuff. You. you need some sass. You need somebody down there selling that other kind of weed. You need some 
Chronic. You need some. You need some. You need, you need some blue. You need to check the size of the woods. Yeah. You, ooh good, good. Wee. you need all that. You need, you, need, you, need, you need some googly goo. You need some. You need some. You need some Jasper. You need some all that. You all that down. How do I get him to stop overthinking everything? Get away from that damn medical marijuana and buy yourself something off some street. He need a street drug because it's just something wrong with him. He might need something stronger than weed. I don't know. I'm just saying he got to go to a club. Then what he need to do? He need to go to a white club on the weekend and just buy something in there. That'll have you somewhere tripping. I don't look. I don't know what to tell you about your husband. You don't like him no more. You don't like being around him no more. Mm. As soon as them kids get out the house, y'all through. You don't think this is a marriage worth saving, Steve? No, no, huh? You don't think their their marriage is worth saving? I don't like him or being around him. What what is we saving it for? Because they're committed, because they took vows. <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, you don't think they're, it's worth saving? That's my question. Well, well, Seriously. First of, all, first of all, know your room. Who you talking to? What do you mean, know your room? You what, don't yeah. think I tried to save a few of them? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> <About you. laughs> everything, everything ain't savable. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's where you are. Sometimes two people just have to admit, look, we made a mistake. <laughs> Damn, this ain't working. You don't like me, and I can't stand your ass either. Why <laughs> are we doing this? Oh. Uh, you don't like being around me. Have you ever been around a person that don't like being around you? That's what? hard, man. And then you trying to act like you like being around them, but they don't like being around and you. You know it. <laughs> Bruh, you can't stay there. Think about that. Everybody on this radio show has been around somebody yeah. that you could feel didn't want to be around you. So now, are you with that person anymore? No. No. <laughs> so why are we trying to keep these two people together? No. Nope. Right, let's get nah. this over with. <laughs> Matter of fact, right after the prom. <laughs> After the kids get back She's in the house. He's got paper. Come on. Oh, on me. It's stupid. Wow. Post your comments yeah. on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and on Facebook. And check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on the free iHeartRadio app because free never sounded so good. You can download it today. Coming up at 46 and minutes. Shirley wants y'all to save y'all's marriage. You, they can. I, I think they can save this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Coming up at 46 minutes right. after the hour, we'll hear from Junior yeah. with Sports Talk right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Well, you know what, Shirley? The NFL free agency starts tomorrow, but there's a few things going to happen before the end. Uh, listen, uh, I don't know how he keep doing it. I don't know because he spent them years in Cleveland, but Bucks signed Baker Mayfield to a three-year, $100 million mm-hmm. deal. Baker Mayfield keep making it happen, man. What? (laughs) Yeah, Baker Mayfield keep coming back. 50 million guaranteed. Man. Wow. Yeah. He's got a good agent. (laughs) Yeah, he got a great agent. Uh He didn't do bad last year, though. He really didn't didn't. do bad last year. No, he took the Bucks to the playoffs, man. I mean, he he earned it. Tampa Bay, huh? Yeah. You can't talk about Baker Mayfield. (laughs) You don't you don't like Baker Is it upsetting you? Baker keep making his money like this, and you don't think he's a great quarterback because he didn't do nothing for Cleveland? Is it what this is about? He ain't done nothing for nobody. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Where, where you see a hundred million at? Yeah. Uh, hey, that's what they gonna pay him. Mm-hmm. But it's over three years. But fifty million is guaranteed, though. So the rest of it gonna be in incentives. But you know. I mean, look, I'm glad for anybody making money. I don't never hate on that. No. But he a hundred million dollar quarterback? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not that. He's no. not that. <laughs> he's he not that. that. I'm sorry. 
He not well, hunting me. Well, what'd you think about this, Unc? Russell Wilson is moving on. He won't be in Denver this season. He could be playing for the Steelers. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Steelers. Come on, Russ. Yeah. Love him. Man. I'm sad about that though, cause I'm Cleveland. We're in the same division. I've hated Pittsburgh my entire life. And now, now you got to start hating. You got to hate Russell. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, you you can't can't hate Russell. Do that, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, you I got to start up. hating him. Y'all you don't know how this Cleveland yeah. thing run. That 125 okay. miles on that turnpike. Ooh, there's some walls up in here. <laughs> no, I'm happy for Russell, man. He need to be over there with Tomlin. That's exactly who they need. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, yes. man. Got $38 like million, dollars, man. Um, you know, black head listen. coach, black quarterback. Black head coach, Let's black go. quarterback. They yeah. teaming up. There's nothing wrong with that, man. So we have okay. uh, six ejected <laughs> in the South no Carolina sponsor. Women's Championship game between LSU and South Carolina. Ooh. I don't know if you saw that. I saw man. it. I watched that game. Man. <clears throat> them women cleared them benches, didn't they? Security jumping over tables. Benches. Man, that had benches. everybody. Yeah, they benches. benches. Bench. That's what I you said. said benches. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we know, we know. No, no, no. It sounded like you said something different right there now. No, no you, you did say benches. benches. You did. Y'all think yeah. I'm crazy. Yo, it sounded like you said a female dog. It sounded like <laughs> I, <did. flipping. laughs> I said clear the benches. <laughs> but Carolina won 79 to 72. <laughs> and they go 32 and 0. And uh, you know what? Congratulate to the Gamecocks. They won. They go on to the uh March Madness, and they're going to be the number one seed. So, man. We Thank you, Junior. I didn't see the fight, though. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, a man on social media <laughs> needs your advice, Steve. He says, my neighbor makes noise all day long. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Doug on Facebook writes, I've lived in the same house for almost a decade. But I got a new next door neighbor last fall. He seemed like a nice guy and for the first few months he was hardly home. I think he's either lost his job or retired because now he's home all the time and is constantly doing noisy work around his house. He blows off his driveway multiple times every day with a leaf blower and works using power tools in his garage into the evening with the door wide open. I've let it go up until now, but it's really starting to irritate me. I need a break from the constant noise, but I don't want to start a rift with my neighbor. How should I handle this without causing a problem? This ain't your business. This ain't your business. You got every right. That man got every right to blow them leaves whenever he wants to. And he work on that garage during the daytime hours with the door open. Now, if you say it seemed like he'd have lost his job and he home now, because at first he was never home, why your ass at home? Mm. See, how is you there all day listening to the noise? What happened to your damn job? See, <laughs> all it, it don't make no sense, man. That don't Don't go over there. It ain't your business. Leave that man alone. He's not doing anything. He in his garage working with power tools. That's his Uh right. He might have a furniture making company, furniture repair. You don't know what he's doing. But he got his garage door open. You can't shut your garage, all that sawdust and stuff in there. That ain't your business. And he blow the leaves twice a day. He don't want no leaves in his yard. (laughs) But why you home listening to it, though? What happened to your job? He blows the, the leaves multiple times a day. He don't want no leaves in the yard. I understand that summer coming. They'll be up. They'll stay up on the tree in the middle. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so, like, what you want? so he can't say nothing to the neighbor. Let it go. Well, I don't. I don't know noise. what he can say. Yeah. I'm, can you, you make too much down? noise in your garage? Well, how? Yeah, how you go? Can you keep here? it down? It's a little noisy over here. No, I can't keep it down. Bring your ass over here again. It's gonna get louder. <laughs> Yeah. What if he has some nicely? What he? But you you can't leave a man alone. That's his house. Okay. People do what they want to do, man. Quit worrying about what your neighbor doing. He ain't in uh, your yard. He ain't blowing the leaves in your grass. Get some earplugs. <laughs> All right, Doug. Why don't you find a job? You working from home? Go work. Go down to the office. <laughs> you ain't got to Don't go over there and say nothing to that man. <laughs> it's not going to go well. well. <laughs> not going to go well. All right, here's another one. Uh, this is from Sean on Steve Harvey FM. Uh, Sean writes, uh, I'm a senior in high school, and for the first... For the past couple of years, I've been running a pretty successful social media channel focused on car culture. 
It started as just a hobby, but now it's grown into a legit side hustle, bringing in enough income for me to survive comfortably. I'd rather continue working on building my side hustle, but my parents are dead set on me going to college. They're all about the traditional path. Get a degree, secure a real job, and then follow your passions on the side. But I'm already doing what I, uh, what I love and making money at it. How do I convince them that college might not be necessary for ev everyone? Is there a way to prove that my side hustle can turn into a full-time career, or do I just give in to keep the peace? Well, listen, man. If you go to college, you're not going to survive it. Because your heart ain't going to be in it. Your heart is not going to be in it. And I, I would say this to all parents, man. You have to listen to your children. I've wanted my children all to take a certain path. Ain't none of them took the path I wanted them to take. Not now, <laughs> one of them. Not now, <laughs> one of them. And it, they turned out fine. Mm -hmm. They'll be okay. College ain't the only way to earn a living. College ain't the only pathway to success. I had to learn that. I used to get mad at kids for playing video games all day long till I met the black ninja and found out he was making $2 million a month and all he did was play video games and kids sign up and pay to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up in 20 minutes after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, before we went to break, uh, you were telling this young man who already has a successful side hustle, telling him how to let his parents know that he didn't want to go to college because they wanted him to take the traditional route and go to college. So you made some you, statements you wanted to clear up. Go ahead. Well, you all said on the break, sound like Steve. Well, you said it. You said Steve sound like you telling people not to go to college. Well, uh -huh. I am. Oh, good. Because <laughs> college is not for everybody. I mean, man, we got to stop looking at it like this. And these young people are finding some creative ways to earn a living on this internet, man, that I did that was not available to us. So, of course, we can't promote that because we want to take the route we took, as in the letter, was a more traditional route. Well, there are untraditional ways of making money right now. But there's a thing called the pursuit of happiness. And if your child is doing something that's clean and legal and they enjoy doing it, you don't have to be able to see exactly what they're doing. This dude to turn this car thing into a hustle where he earning money. If you let him perfect that, he can make hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly millions. And ain't that what you go to college for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It and, is. And college, college is, is a bit of a, you know, it's just, let me just say, it's just not for everybody. There you go. And uh, I hate to tell you this, but the richest men in the world don't even have college degrees. Mm, very true. Yeah. As long right. as your child has a legitimate, viable love and dream, let them pursue it and save yourself some damn money. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play another round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for a round of Would You Rather. Would you rather be okay looking, but very funny, or be super hot, but very, very boring? I'm living, eh? Very mm. embodiment of it. Because I'm looking at two okay looking ass people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who are you looking at, Steve? Who is you looking you at? You and Junior? I'm just and you, the, I got news for you. The only reason I'm saying okay is that what was in the question. You ain't, you ain't even all right if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you rather have your heart broken? I don't want to get no ahead good in hell. Well, I ain't good looking. I ain't not, I, see. I'm the only one you on the show. Got the two little, little little ass 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 I gotta answer that one, Shirley. <laughs> no, me and Little Ugly Ass Junior, only one readily admit. Yeah. What this shit? Strange ass looking other person always act like he cute. Oh, hard looking ass. But you gotta man. feel Come good on. about yourself. <laughs> I'm fine, right? I don't, I don't care how I look. Oh, okay. I ain't got that. I ain't making you don't make money on how you look. Ain't now, ain't nobody, ain't now one of these dudes made no money based on how they look. <laughs> no, no, that's true. That's, Junior that's Tommy and Steve. That's, no, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's better All write right. these jokes and get on out here. <laughs> All right, so would you rather have your heart broken 50 times, but finally find your soulmate on the 51st time? Okay. Or would you rather never have your heart broken, but spend your life with someone you know doesn't love you? 
What? Is she fine, though? <laughs> <laughs> he was gonna say that. <laughs> Is she fine though? The one that don't love me. You gonna be say. miserable though. Doesn't say. I, I'm be cool with it, but I'm not gonna get my heart broke fifty times. Wait, don't yeah, fifty, 50 times. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Give me that fine. Do don't give a damn about you. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Man, you me down. Heartbreaks. Heartbreaks. <laughs> Setbacks. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. A lot. I've enjoyed them, though. Ooh, I have had a wonderful time getting my heart cracked. Man, me too. Uh, I'm with you. I'm the embodiment of friend zone. I've been friend zone so many times. You know, it just ain't going to work. We just going to be friends. Okay. I'm cool. I'll try it again. I'm coming back. As your Man, friend. I broke up with so many damn times. <laughs> I thought that's what the relationship was for. <laughs> All right. All right. So would you rather marry an average looking person who is nice but loves you? Or would you mar- rather marry the sexiest person on the planet who's very mean and a horrible person? Oh, I want that sexy as hell, mean, damn it. Oh, yeah. What? Ooh, mm-hmm. you, what's wrong with Sex? you, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you just. What? I'm going to take this all right looking girl. Yeah, on take it all right. Life with her. Nice to me. <laughs> all right. Man. Right. That is today's <laughs> round of Would You Rather. <laughs> Coming up next, Steve Harvey will close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, here we are, our last break of the day on this Tuesday. Don't forget, uh, you can vote today in the states of Georgia and Mississippi. Please get out and vote. Election you got this, Georgia. Yeah. You done Election it before. You got this. Yeah. You right. know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Primaries, local uh-huh. elections. You can't ignore that this is not November. Still go to the yep. polls. There are things on the ballot that need your attention. You got to go out there and vote. Got to do Every it. time, every uh-huh. election, go to the polls. You know what they ought to do? They ought to make all this on one day. Huh. What? <laughs> General so election, to, all yeah. that on one damn day. Just get it on one day. Uh, all these yeah. issues and stuff right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We should all have it on one day. That would less complicate things, I think. They, they, they want it complicated, so they you will, whole won't process. do it. Uh-huh. That's the issue. They want hey, it to know be what? complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They want it. I got some closing remarks. Okay. You know, um, earlier today we were talking about college, but you know what I really want to focus on? I want to talk about a person's dreams and how important they are. I cannot express to you the importance of chasing your dreams. I'm in the dream, I'm in the dream chasing business, man. I just believe in it. I believe in it wholeheartedly. Your dream is the most important thing in your life. Outside of your relationship with God and outside of who you choose to spend the rest of your life with, you got to, you got to, it's your dreams, man. It's your dreams and your visions. It's the thing that you aspire to. It's the thing that keeps you awake at night. It's the thing that troubles you that you can't get off your heart. It's in your imagination. It's that dream thing, man. You got to pursue that. It makes life worth living. It makes it fun to wake up in the morning. I don't wake up in the morning and I go, oh, wow, another day. I wake up every morning and go, wow, another chance. Another opportunity. Let's go. You know, I mean, I'm just grateful for that, man. I mean, I wish everybody could feel and experience that. And you can't, but you have to make the decision. You can, but you, well, oh, no, Steve, see, you different. You doing what you want to do for a living. Because I made a decision one day. But you have the right to make that same decision, folks. You don't have to sit there and play the hand that's dealt to you. You can actually ask God for a new set of cards. You can do that. You can ask God for another chance. God is in another chance business. You can ask God for forgiveness. God don't hold your past against you. People do. Y'all, when God forgives you, it's over. You get a clean slate problem is you got people in your life to keep reminding you of who you was and won't let you be who you have decided to be. They won't even allow the new you to exist because they keep bringing up the old you. You got to distance yourself from them people, man. Them is haters, man. Them is haters. They work for the other side. 
you know, look, God got soldiers, but the devil do too. They call imps, and they busy. They busy 24-7, and they people, they, they the, the imp resides in people you didn't even think. Man, so you ever had somebody in your life you thought you was cool with, you found out they was talking about you behind your back? And you went, wow. And it throw you off to the point where you were down, thought we was cool. Or you ever somebody, somebody put their mouth on you that you ain't never met? But they got their mouth on you. I deal with that all the time. There's always somebody somewhere talking about me. Ain't never met me. Just got their mouth on me. But you got to be careful, though. You got to be careful about putting your mouth on certain people, man. It's some people out here that God truly care about. It's some people out here that God got on certain missions for him. You can't keep putting your mouth on God's people. You can't keep putting your mouth on people that God has chosen that's got on a certain path, you can't keep putting your mouth on anointed people. You got to be careful. Because them anointed people, they ain't going to fire back. They ain't going to say nothing. But you got to be careful, though. Listen, y'all. God is in the forgiving business. God is in the get your life together business. God is in the make it all right business. God is good, man. Man, look, y'all have got to stop pursuing stuff that 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 you that's not important to you. I was reading this thing, man, about seven qualities of becoming a billionaire or rich or something like that. I forgot what it was. Two of the things stuck out to me. It said, forget about the women and get yourself one woman. Because if you get yourself one good woman who's willing to help you, work with you, support you, love you, Man, you can get with that one good woman and she can be the missing link to your whole success. She can get you there. And you know, another thing is said on this thing, stay off the internet. That is so crazy, man. Stay off the internet. Because if you got your life wrapped around social media, social media going to get you wrapped around it. You got to be careful what you put in your day-to-day, man. Because what you digest it's what you're going to regurgitate. If you keep digesting hate, you're going to end up spewing hate. Be careful out there, y'all. Take care of yourself, man. Believe in the dream. Trust in the vision. Talk to God every day. He'd absolutely love to hear from you. And never, ever, no matter what, don't you ever give up. Because you just don't know when God is going to flip the switch. He ain't ever too late. Quit thinking he is because he's never too late. Those are my closing remarks, y'all. Uh, have yourself a great day. Uh, talk to God. Like I said, he'd love to hear from you. If not, you're going to be running your mouth with somebody who don't care about you at all. And it ain't no good. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 